Hi and welcome to 15 Minutes with Longevity. I'm Giselle wertheim Ames, and I'll be your host. Joining me in the studio is my co-host, Dr. C.D. Gurley. Nice to have you back in the studio. Always good to be here with you, Giselle. Yeah. As well as Professor Elna McIntosh, she's a clinical sexologist, and today we're going to be talking about STIs. And it's Condom Week. The mm -hmm. 10th to 16th of February is National STIs and Condom Week. So today we will be looking at the importance of engaging in safe sex, as well as why it is crucial to always be open and honest with your partner. And I think that's really an important part and probably the big taboo subject. You deal with that every day in your life. So let's maybe just talk about this whole idea of STIs. Why are we so embarrassed? And why are people so embarrassed <laughs> about this subject when it actually can be life-threatening? in some cases. I think we've become um, quite okay with HIV and people tend to hop on and, and I see it in new relationships. People go off hand in hand and do HIV tests and forget that there's actually 24 other STDs to worry about. STIs actually, we call them STIs yes. nowadays, sexually transmitted infections because not all infections, not all diseases um, not all infections are diseases. diseases. Yeah, so some of them are, we can all get them. We can get thrush, we can get bacterial vaginosis, chlamydia, chlamydia yeah, and then there's the, yeah. the really heavy things. I call them the big seven, actually. What are they? So um, I say HIV, herpes, gonorrhea, syphilis, hepatitis B for healthcare workers, but also men who have sex with men, not mm -hmm. necessarily just homosexual men. And then did I say chlamydia? There yeah. it is, human papillomavirus. Yes. And you know you can get it in the back of the throat as well. Really? Well, people perceive oral sex to be safe sex. And, um, and often, and, and so I'm talking about clients that I see, would have, have gone and had, if men have sex with um, sex workers or just with people they don't know. And I always say to them, do you think you're special? You think you were the only one down that throat? Because we sometimes <laughs> don't know. Like I know. <laughs> but it is very yeah. important to know that gonorrhea, right. syphilis, chlamydia can sit in the back yeah. of the throat. And now HPV, we, we need to be aware of that. So when we look at mm. those seven, sorry, mm. sorry, no see, when we look at the, the, those seven, what, yeah. what are the ones that we really have to be concerned about? I mean, they're all important, but um, why should people protect themselves? And what do they need to arm themselves with in terms of information about these these, these seven these so I seven think for infections. young women, chlamydia, and it's really one of those tests that people don't really pay a lot of attention to, but chlamydia ultimately um, can cause blockage of the fallopian tubes, which will lead to infertility. Yes. So it's, for me, it's a test that if I see a young woman, it's have you had your chlamydia test done? And HPV, it is a pap smear, and that is uh, something that I feel women should do every because year. Because that's the cervical cancer route that we will go down if yeah. we... Yeah, and and the ones where again from a society, I, mean, I think there's certain infections are that there is simply no remedy or, or treatment for. For example, herpes. I think you can take, you know, you can you can use creams and that, but there is no cure for herpes. And like love, and it, it's forever. It's forever. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But what are loving? Uh, what are responsible ways when it comes to getting partners to engage as a couple, whether it's homosexual, heterosexual, etc to really explore the sexually trans transmitted infection conversation. I think one of the things we see a lot in clinical practices, mm -hmm. you'll get one of the partners presenting when there's already a problem. Yeah. You do the screening or, and they want an STI profile. You do that, but you don't get the partner buy-in. How do you, in your profession, encourage there to be an openness and destigmatizing STI so that partners really engage sexual, uh, sexually responsibly in these kind of scenarios? So I think it's exactly shows like this where you can, because we need to start a dialogue. You know, I watched a very interesting show tonight and, and actually I thought we have actually um, never gone for testing because what often happens is we meet a new partner and you start off with all good intentions and you're using condoms and then sort of two, three months later you think, well, I'm not seeing anybody else. Yep. And then the condom goes and sort of, and sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. So when I see, um, and I see a lot of young women, there, and we call it well woman screening. So they okay. will come for their family planning, we check their breasts, and it's a wonderful opportunity to actually sit down with women and talk to women. But we tend to not talk to men. Because men, why? Because they don't come to the clinic. Mm -hmm. Unless they did, you know, almost. And, and now you raise an interesting point, because if we think about it, the men can be more in control of that, of, of actually the protection side of sex. Yes. 
So, you know, I know we have a female condom now and we can talk mm. a little bit about it, but let's be honest. I mean, if a man is not using a condom and you cannot stand up to that, mm. you are putting yourself at huge risk. And it is very and difficult for a lot of women to do that. For a lot of that. women to do that. If men were just to accept or to be very responsible about mm. that, then we would probably have less problems. So how, you know, how, how do we get to that point? Because... Um, is it because people don't, you know, they don't know that they are infected or they simply just don't want to deal with it? What do you, I mean, in your I think experience? also if you just look at anatomy, so men have genitals that are there that you can see and they do, they look at them often and they feel, are they still there? And then they, yeah, now they are and then they go along again. Whereas this woman, we're like, oh, it's rather not. And, and so often we think, and this is what happens to a lot of women, they get just, they get thrush or they get bacterial vaginosis and they think, Oh, I smell a bit funny, but let's just leave it. And instead of actually go and, and investigate, mm. and where you can put people's minds at ease, you know, um, it's such a, it's almost like a foreign country. You know, it's like the Bermuda Triangle. People never come back from there. So let's just not even talk about it. Mm. And, and so how do we make it more easier? And in relationships, it's often like we blame the first one to test mm -hmm. or has a funny itch. Or, and you know the great thing about a new relationship, you have mm. a lot of sex. Right. And then suddenly if you have a lot of sex, you get what we lovingly call honeymoon cystitis. You get a bladder infection. Mm. Right. And now instead of just actually going in it, and again, that's a wonderful opportunity when you've got a bladder infection and I'd say to them, oh, you've got a new partner, whatever, and have you looked? And are you, are you, are you on a contraceptive? That you can cover that whole region almost, I want to say. And it's more consultation. Now, now the fun part. Yeah, well, well, I really want to ask this question. I mean, you know, how safe, I mean, we again, I mean, we spoke about, okay, protection. Mm. And we have various, yeah, I have a female, I'm going to give that to you. This is a female condom. I'll and then connected. I'll give you that, I don't know what that is. Um, it's colourful. <laughs> it's colourful. <laughs> and then, of course, these are, you know, what we all kind of know about male, right. you know, the male protection. Oh, can this really protect you against an STI? So it can protect you against a lot of STIs, but there's certain ones that it doesn't. And for instance, Meloscum contagiosum, what a wonderful mouthful. Oh my goodness, mouthful. what is that? <laughs> so Meloscum yeah. contagiosum often mm. we will find in the pubic region because where two pelvises are rubbed together. It is a friend of the pox virus, it is a, it's viral mm. again. And though it's not going to kill you, it is not attractive and it's not pleasant. Mm. So we often see them and they just look like pimples or ingrown hairs. But it is, it's a viral infection and it needs treatment. So that is not going to protect you. Neither does, if you've got genital warts, which is 6 and 11, we get 100 different types of HPV. And so 6 and 11 causes genital warts. So often around the base of the penis, mm -hmm. we find these warts. So you protect it everywhere else, but around here. And then if we're in heterosexual sex, right there, the vagina and the penis is there. And right there, we get the warts and around the base of the okay. penis. Mm -hmm. So often, sort of almost as part of foreplay, you have to easily part that hair and sort of look. Because they can also, pubic lice can also sit there, which is also an STD. And we don't really talk about that either. Elna, okay. I'm really interested. Um, you know, when it comes to condom promotion in all sorts of scenarios in society, mm -hmm. people are extremely resistant to look at the 99% versus 100% aspect mm -hmm. of protection. These guys, what kinds of infection are they really good at protecting an average person from? So HIV, we right. know. Mm. And um, then Again, HPV, it would be good at syphilis, gonorrhea. But to get a person to perform oral sex on a, uh, uh, on a genital with condoms, no, people don't want to. No, that's not attractive. That's not nice. So then I say, but you get fla haven't you got flavoured in your hand there? What is that? Um, um, mine is no. a very interesting flavour. Banana flavoured lubrication. Mm -hmm. I don't think these are flavoured. <laughs> so you can perform these kind of, I will call it transactions, um, with protective uh, devices what did you call like an a alcoholic condom. transaction. <laughs> no, oral transactions. <laughs> it's a new word. It's a new medical <laughs> terminology. An oral transaction. Right. Um, yes, absolutely. Mm. You can use. Uh, if, you know, I often think of oral sex. It's quite an art. It's like an acquired taste, almost. You know, it's like sushi and raw eggs and a mixture of things. But 
women have a gag reflex. It's very difficult for us often to perform oral sex. But if you've got some sort of nice tasting, something that already helps a little bit, I think. But again, can you see the communication? Mm. We need to talk about it. Okay. You, you can't just bump the back of my head and force something. We need mm. to actually talk. And if we're going to have sex, and now people don't do this. When we first meet and we go, what was your grade one teacher's name? We discuss everything except first time we're going to have sex, is it going to be protected? Are we first going to go for testing? So I think in 2014, a very romantic thing to do is let's go together. You know, this whole together. Yes. <laughs> and yes. we actually go and test. Mm. What just can yeah. be more romantic than that? It says I'm taking a responsible. I trust you as, as responsible as Great. me. We're talking about this. We're spending some time together. And I think you probably summed it up there. But is there any other advice? Because again, we, we talk about this. But what can you? What, what should what should the message be out there? If, first of all, if you are infected, if you have an infection, Correct. what what is what is your response to that? So and then general general advice in closing. So if you've got an infection, because. It's very easy, we say you must disclose, but you know, it's not that easy to actually disclose whether it's your HIV status or your herpes status. It's because we now feel, oh, I'm telling you I'm HIV positive and I feel so much better, but you weren't ready for this. So it's about timing. You know, we can't just, um, and when do you actually tell somebody? On the first date, hi, my name is Elna and I have whatever. <laughs> you know, okay, I'm out of I here. I don't think that will No, work. of course yeah. not. But if we're going to, uh, and I, you know, I work with a lot of students and I love them. They come and see me and then they go, um, Auntie Elna, we're going to go to the next level, you know, as if we were on another level. And which really just means we're going to, we're going yeah. to have sex now. And again, that is a wonderful opportunity Correct. to discuss. Mm. But I think as you get older, or it's almost easier if you're starting off a new relationship because then you can say, this is what we're going to do. But if you're in a relationship and you may be starting to feel, you know, I think he's cheating on me. But how do I actually address mm. that? And I don't feel safe anymore. Mm. And if trust issues also start rearing its ugly head in a relationship, you know, a lot of women are at risk. And we know that the yes. epidemic of HIV is fueled in, in committed relationships because people, they're just like, exactly. out the door. So you've got to stand up for your rights. Mm. You've yeah. got to have your and boundaries. Open communication seems and you to must be the cornerstone. That. And you should get tested regularly, I assume. Mm. So yeah. when you have your organic checkups or if you're a male, when you have your medical checkups, check. I just want to say that there are wonderful, okay. responsible men out there. And there are a lot of women that also cheat. Yes. So we often go all men and no. I agree. It's, it's a two-way street. Thanks, Alna, for joining me. Thanks again, Sidi, for being with me on the Thanks show. Thanks for having me, G. And thank you for joining us. We hope to see you here again next week. Stay well, be healthy, and it's Valentine's Day. So I hope you have a wonderful day. And take it easy, be safe. Goodbye.